Oh, we're third. He's going to place. He's going to place. Give him Guff, McGuffin. McGuffin takes it. McGuffin takes it. Number three. I never thought I'd be so, so happy to get third, but we placed. <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are hopping into the classic known as Power Drift. This was an arcade game known for giving people intense racing simulation feels, but also intense violent hurt feels. Because in this game, as you can see, it's going to be a very high paced racing game. And it was known in the arcades, like, the, the seat that you sat in while you played this game jostled around and shook violently as you played. Yes, when they designed this game, they wanted to make a game that felt as fast as it looked. And they did so by creating this sort of faux 3D uh, kind of, you know, movement. Like, if you've ever been to uh, the old Back to the Future ride at uh, Universal Studios, or I guess these days it would be the Simpsons ride, because that was the one that replaced it. Or I, it might even be another one, maybe Terry Potter these days, for all I know. But that thing where you're seeing stuff on the screen, and your seat is like moving around in three dimensions to give you the feeling that you're actually in the, the game or the movie, that is what we're talking about here. And so, as you can see, this is going to be a very high-paced, high-speed high game, guys. We're going to try this both on the Sega Saturn and the Sega Dreamcast because I've heard mixed things about the implementation of the game on both. And I just want to have a quick check at both. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in here to the world of Power Drift. Now you can already tell just by paying attention to the intro there, the, uh, the montage that the computer is playing, that this game is going to feature sprite scaling in the same vein as games like OutRun, Afterburner, you know, Space Harrier, all those games. Um, but it is running at 60 frames per second, so I don't know if that's going to sort of be conveyed in the YouTube video, um, but definitely that is how fast the game is going. Alright, so we're going to start with Course A. And we are a cool-looking dude in a pink go-kart. He, he's kind of having to compensate for the fact he's in a pink go-kart by trying to be extra cool. Okay, so we missed the, the buzzer there. Everyone is, like, shaking their fists violently as we, like, pass them. Oh, oh, we're bouncing all over the walls here. Okay, so I am going gonna, gonna to warn you guys right now not to have high hopes for how I place in this game. Oh crap, you know what? Something I think I just realized. We are playing on manual. Oh, he did it. He's doing a wheelie for some reason. I don't know why that's the case. So he's, I think he's driving in manual. And if anyone knows me, I do not know how to shift gears in a car. It's just a great mystery to me. I'm like, how do you know? I mean, like, I guess when the RPMs get really high, you're supposed to shift uh, your gears. But I mean, it's, you know. I, I always drove automatic cars. I, it would never cross my mind that I had to do something. The car always took care of itself. I don't know. Why, why do you have to tell it when to shift? Doesn't it know? Somehow, I got first there. Or, wait, wait did I get third? I, I was so confused there. I was like, in the middle of my rambling, somehow I had managed to play. So you have to get first, second, or third to go on in this game. I thought I might have come in first. Oh, man. Those people's houses are right at the edge of, like, a high-speed racing track. That is not where you want to live in this world. Let me just tell you, oh, we fell off the track. We fell off the track. That's awesome. Uh, this this game is known for having sort of roller coaster like tracks, which I think is totally awesome. In a way, this game kind of reminds me of Whiplash slash Fatal Racing. Same game. Um, if you guys are fans of mine, you may have watched Oh, we fell off again. You may have watched my Saturday afternoon gaming uh, series, and in that series, I play just whatever games I want. They don't have to be in the book, A Thousand One Games, just play before you die. But uh, Whiplash is a game that I grew up with. There's an old DOS game, and oh man. Oh, I thought we fell off. Did we just get first? Oh no, someone else got first. Oh man, fifth. Oh, we smashed into a guy at high speed and wiped out in fifth. Are they going to boot us out of the race, or are they going to have pity on us? Continue, yes or no? Um, yes, I would like to keep going. Uh, and I think, is this the same track? We might have to keep playing this until we beat it. Yeah, I think it is. 
time of day changed. It's now purple o'clock. But anyway, Whiplash is a game that I grew up with that I love that I always felt was like NASCAR meets Hot Wheels. It's it, it was like this, where you had, like, huge ramps and jumps, and it, it, it was more crazy than this, but, I mean, we're only on the second level here, so it's hard to say that this game, you know, has reached its limit of craziness. I'm expecting bigger things in this game. Oh, stay on the track, for the love of God, don't fall off again. Man, my guy needs a name. I feel like Jake McCool. That's sort of a nice 80s everyman hero name, Mr. McCool. You know, you'll never win, Mr. McCool, and that hunk of junk. And, uh, you know, everyone else, they sort of boycott him from the race. He's like the guy who's like, he has a witty response for everything. That's his character. Jesus, how's the first place guy finished already? I didn't even see him. He's like shaking his fist. They're all like, as soon as they, as soon as they, they win the race, they all start flexing their muscles. Like, it's been so long since I flexed. Finally, the race is over, and I can show you women the glorious biceps that is Chad. Chad and Derek. Oh, God, we smashed through a house, I think, right there. Chad and Derek are laughing at us in our ineptitude. Oh, we're going into the, the trees again. Oh, help us. Oh, man. You know, I've often said this when I do bad at racing games. But imagine you're watching, like, a NASCAR game. And there's just like one car at like the very back, like ping ponging left and right off of the walls, smashing into like the, the walls of tires they build and all sorts of stuff, just demolishing his car. That would be me. That's that's my that would be my limited venture into professional racing. Oh god, we're all over the place. Come on. Pull it together, Jay. People are watching. Oh my god. <laughs> I like to think that this race was not planned or approved by anyone just the people who live on that like dirt road one day they were like you know <laughs> Betty call the police there's cars racing at about 300 miles an hour there's a whole gang of them call the cops it's happening again maybe maybe if you didn't live on a enclosed track uh, uh, you know an enclosed arena this wouldn't happen because it doesn't seem like there's any turnoffs here. You know, the people who live in this area, they have a very limited area of spots that they're, they can, they're capable of driving to. They can just pretty much drive in a circle. And there's no stores here, it's just houses. So they're probably on a barter system of some kind, having to wheel and deal with each other for simple supplies like sugar. You know, if somebody doesn't grow sugar, you just don't get sugar. Plus, maybe they have supplies delivered by uh, aircraft. Maybe this is like in Alaska. You know, these are all like uh, wilderness folks who want to sort of spend their retirement, their golden years in the country of Alaska. Oh, God. And also watching high speed, ra Ill, you know, illegal r street races. No, we were we were placing. Oh, damn it. Damn it. OK, uh, let's let's give this give this gal one more shot. If we fail again, I'll tell you what, we'll switch tracks to a uh, different course. Although we're getting like a, a good variety of, of scenery and stuff just by like hanging out uh, in this like one, uh, what would you call it? This one track? It's not a track, it's like a set of tracks. It's one cup. In Mario Kart, it would be a cup. We're like in the mushroom cut equivalent of Mario Kart. Oh man, I was driving in, in low gear the whole time. Oh god, oh god, into the trees. Up to low, up to high. To, to high, stay in high gear. We're eighth. Okay, another thing we're going to switch, I think, is that I'm going to go ahead and switch to manual rather than... Or no, automatic rather than manual. Manual's the one we don't want. Oh, he bumped me into the houses. Betty, they drove through my petunias. Call the police. Why aren't you calling? Maybe she's entranced by the race. She's like, I just love a good competition. Look at them go. Oh my god, we did even worse, six! Okay, that's a sign, guys, that's a sign. All right, we got 20, wait, 284,000 points? Is that a lot, is that good? How many points do professional racers have? Like a NASCAR racer? You know, he's like, oh, I got 1.2 bill. Been accumulating my whole career. Pretty good, if you know what I mean. Okay, going to automatic, control pad. Let's switch to easy. Sound test, poker face. What they, is this, is this Lady Gaga? 
That is not Lady Gaga, by the way. <laughs> it's the original Poker Face. My God, Lady Gaga's a hack. She's just been stealing. She w she stole from Power Drift. Oh my God. Okay. The things you learn playing these old arcade games. Okay, we tried A. Let's try the wonderful land of B. <laughs> Imagine these are like names of countries or cities or something like that. Welcome to B. In B, we don't have a problem with coming in second, but we really hate coming in third. It's just garbage. Okay. This guy, I feel like he's in a more aggressive car than the other one. The other guy was kind of in like a, a little uh, go-kart thing, like that pink thing that I just drove by. Oh, but we're smashing up already. This guy feels like he's in like the monster truck equivalent of a, a go-kart. In fact, now that I think about it, these are all kind of go-karts. These are... Oh! Don't you do that to me! I do that to you. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Oh my god! <laughs> well, we're somehow in third. I think switching it to easy and automatic was a good thing for us. When you when you drive like that, and that you still are better than, than 12 other people who are racing, uh, that's, that's not a good sign for the other people who are racing. Really embarrassing, actually. Okay. I feel like I'm getting a little better at this, but it's tricky. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got third. I will take it. In the land of B, that is the ultimate shame, but we will take it. I wonder if, like, A, B, and C have a rivalry. And, like, D just doesn't even factor into the equation. D is like, I'm pretty good, guys. And they're like, shut up, D. No Ds here. Oh, I fell off the track. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Falling off the track, get to fifth. What are all those billboards that we're passing really fast? Sold. We're driving through like a real estate development and it looks like ads for like a casino or something like that. So a while back, quite a while back now, I was at a, uh, I, w I was in Niagara Falls, uh, which had like a big midway when I was a kid. I had like arcade machines and all sorts of stuff. I used to go in and you know what game I would play is off-road. Ivan Iron Man's off-road. Because on one quarter, I could last for like half an hour. It was it was such, I wouldn't even say an easy game, but it was fun. It was almost like a little racing RPG. Ah, oh, crap. We're definitely not placing this race, are we? Um, crap. It was like a little racing RPG where every time you won a race, you got money and you could like upgrade parts of your car and eventually get faster and you turn better and stuff. But like one quarter would get you like half an hour of gameplay. So I was a huge fan of that, and I used to, to go into an arcade in Niagara Falls and play that whenever I visited with my family. And I went, uh, I went, uh, when did I go? I guess, I guess in the winter. Um, in February, I guess? Anyway, and it was so disappointing. I went to where the arcade used to be, and it's still like a big kid midway, but it's like they took all the arcade games out, and now instead of arcade games... Uh, it's essentially just all like ticket prizes, like the uh, Ski Ball and like the Whack-A-Mole. And those games are actually not bad. But beyond those sort of classic ticket games, there aren't many ticket games that I inherently think are all that good. They're just sort of like very, very simple, you, I wouldn't even necessarily call them games, simple activities that earn you tickets. So like with the ticket games, you know, I don't think many people are like, oh man, I can't wait to go play that game where you try and like make the, the dots that are moving back and forth line up to get as high as it can so I can earn a little prize. Like, that's a fun game. No, people are like, I want to play, you know, like Off-Road or, I don't know, Ninja Turtles or X-Men, the arcade game, you know? Like, people want to play games. They want to play like little activities or in tickets. So anyway, long story short, the, the arcade is essentially no more. Oh, they're bouncing me all over the road. Where are we now? We're driving for like a construction site. And uh, with the arcade being no more, you know, it's all just ticket machines now, which is kind of sad because it's like, I guess the arcades just don't bring in money like they used to. So they're, they've kind of abandoned them. So the Midway has like fully turned into a child casino where you pay money to try and win tickets and then buy prizes. That's all there is to do now. So, yeah, I don't know. A little disappointing. Although one thing they did have a lot of were racing games and shooting games. For some reason, those still stuck around. Um, and I think it's because you can't fully experienced like an arcade racer in your home because arcade racers are like full simulation devices like you're sitting in a seat with a racing wheel and stuff and most people don't have that kind of setup for their home console god we did horrible uh same with shooting you know like light guns and stuff they're not that common for 
home consoles these days, so they're kind of an experience you only get out of the arcade, so I guess they kind of had staying power. But, you know, you, you didn't see any, like, classic arcade games in there. Um, they had, like, a modernization of Pac-Man, which was a multiplayer uh, Pac-Man game where you had to eat pellets, and as you did, your Pac-Man grew bigger, and there were three other Pac-Man, you could eat each other, which I actually thought was hilarious. So, you know, uh, the, you know, there's, there's little tidbits of arcades still there, but uh, just not the same. Uh, but this game, so apparently, let me expand on uh, what I said earlier when I introduced this game. Apparently this game, uh, the seat would jostle around as you raced, and it would, like, move in sync with what you were seeing. But it did so pretty damn violently to the... Oh, we're killing it now. We're in first place. We're mopping the floor. See, all I need... Is, that first round was just a practice round. One practice round is all I need. Although now I'm definitely going to mess it up because I said something. That's how it goes with me. Oh, no, we got first. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Eat it. Go for number one. This is the Japanese version of the game, but all the voices in English. Pretty interesting. Um... Whoa, we did a jump! Whoa, and we smashed into a tree. Serves us right for jumping. Where are we, like medieval England now? There's like silos and castles. Oh, I got. I was too busy looking at the silos. Did not notice I was driving straight towards a wall. Wee, that's pretty fun. But anyway, the sea would jostle around during jumps like that quite a bit. Uh, to the point where it was like actually pretty painful, I think, for people. So, uh, yeah, this game had a bit of a reputation. Awesome game, but the actual arcade version might not be a version that you want to play these days. You know, especially if you're, you know, we're all getting older, guys. You're getting older. You know, when, when I play a video game, I don't want it to physically assault me as I play. Like, I'm at that stage where, like, I will, I'll believe you if you just want to show me that the character in the game is having a hard time and is kind of bouncing all over the place. That's enough for me. I can mentally put myself in their shoes and say, whoa, that guy had a really rough go. I don't need to myself get sort of beat up as I play a game. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's such a funny mentality. Let's beat up our customers as they play this game. Because it really did move that violently. Anyway, uh, let, so we got 294,000 points. We're moving up in the world. Well, I think we should switch over and check out the Dreamcast version of this so we can see um, if it looks any different. The Dreamcast, I think, is the most... Uh, faithful port of the game, although I think the Sega Saturn one here is also pretty faithful, but let's just go ahead and switch over anyway. Alrighty, so here we are. So Power Drift is part of a, a sort of GameWorks volume. Um, I'll butcher the name if I try to say it, but there it is. That's the arcade system that I was sort of talking about that you would sit in that would jostle and shake around as you played. So the Dreamcast version here I think is the most faithful port and so, as you can see, right off the bat, the screen is going to be tilting. Yes, this is something I was pretty sure that was not in the Sega Saturn version. I thought it might be, but definitely it was not. The game is about to get a little more intense here, guys. So let's go ahead and hop in here. One thing I noticed is that it is selecting the driver along the top. So whenever we want, we can press go and we will get the driver we want. I was actually trying to go for the girl, number nine, but I got the spiky-haired mohawk guy. So we are going into the land of sea, once more into the reach. Well, this is trippy that the screen tilts. This is also kind of actually really neat. I can't think of too many games where the screen legitimately tilts as you turn. Oh man, it's, it's making it harder to drive. I'm bouncing all over the place. It definitely increases the immersion in a weird way, which is cool. I, I'm, it, it's, it's, you know, every time I play a Dreamcast game, not every time, because not, not, it's not like every game I've played I've loved. But I find that Dreamcast has some really interesting sort of gems here. And, like, look at this. This is a game from, like, the 80s. And they just sort of uh, did a really, really faithful port of it, trying to add in screen tilting to capture the feel of being in an arcade machine. So that's awesome. Also, I'm thinking the Land of Sea is actually just code for California, because look at this bright beach, and we got the sun on our shoulders. We have water, palm trees... Makes me wonder where A and B were. A is like, I don't know, Albuquerque, and B was Boston or something? I don't know. Botswana, maybe? Maybe we're in a third world country? So we placed fourth. We're going to go ahead and continue, though. Press start. Yes. Oh, does it just make... Okay. I think in the arcade, 
Maybe I'm mistaken. I think in the arcade, if you get first, second, or third, then you, um, then you, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. I'm having to concentrate on driving. If you get first, second, or third, you move on. If you get fourth, I think you have the option of moving on, but your score doesn't, like, tally up. You know, again, this is back in the arcades when everyone cared about scores. We don't, obviously. Um, but I thought if you got fourth, you would still go on to the next course, but I guess I must be mistaken. Obviously, I am. Man, the, the tilting is really throwing me here for a little bit. Also, have you noticed that the roads... Okay, look, the road... There's something wrong with the road versus the sand. Like, the road is, like, raised up off of the sand, but then the, it's not like the road is, is actually raised up. Because look at the trees. They're... It's really hard to describe, but if I go off the road a bit, you see the side of the road, but then the trees are lined up at the top of the road, not with the sand. It's just, it's like they messed up the dimensions of the sand, kind of. You guys, do you guys see what I'm talking about here? Um, it's, it's hard to describe. Hey, look, even the, even the, the girl's flexing her muscles. She's like, we have muscles too. Check out my sweet bicep. It is very toned and shapely. I guess for uh, a woman, you would not want to have. Oh, we can even look in reverse. Yeah, let's try and drive this way. This is going to work out real well. Wee! <laughs> that was a little too disorienting. Okay, I'm stuck in high gear. I don't know how to switch it off of high gear. I guess my guy just... He's like, forget about starting in gear one. I start in gear five, baby. I'm at the max. Is, if, there is any, if there is even a fifth gear in cars, I don't actually know. What's the top gear? Four? Something like that. Uh, I think st starting in the top gear, though, definitely is hurting my chances here. Because we're struggling a lot. So anyway, this game was released as part of the Yu Suzuki Works. Uh, sort of a compilation disc for the Dreamcast. Which was Sega's attempt to go and take some of their arcade classics and modernize them. Okay, I just lost the video feed there and had to restart. I feel like our time is limited with this game, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and try one more track here. Let's go, what do we want, D or E, Cowboys? Oh, well, let's go to the ocean, man. We're going to the ocean. And we were just assigned a driver. I did not pull the trigger there. Uh, we have a retired NBA player. He's like, you know what? You know what I've always wanted to do is race. So, uh, yeah, Power Drift. What have we learned here today, guys? I think we have learned that if you attempt to violently assault your customers in the development of your arcade game, oh, he's giving people guff. He's giving people attitude right off the bat. Oh, and then he got the guff. The guff came back. That could be a song. He's still giving people guff, though. He's like, so what that I wiped out? You still suck. Come on, let's give guff to this green guy. Give guff to the green guy. Yes. Oh, I love this guy. This guy is awesome. This is how I would drive. Just, like, totally being the jerk on the course. Totally, I you know, and then when I wipe out, everyone's like, yep, he deserved it. He was kind of an a-hole. Let's give guff to this guy. I want to give all the guff I can. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, we're off the track. He, he, he gave guff there because he defied the laws of gravity. He was like, you know, most people, when they hover over water with no road below them, they fall and die, but not me. I give guff when that happens. All right. I guess this guy's name is McGuffin. Now, uh... <laughs> Uh, I lost my total train of thought there. It, it is weird how they draw the roads here. The roads are just like chunks of sprite. This whole game is based off of sprites, obviously. There's no actual 3D rendering here. So the road is just like a series of like logs that are lined up. If, you'll, if, if you've been paying attention to how the graphics look, it like, looks really weird. Now we're in like Christmas Town all of a sudden. Where's Santa? Let's mow that. Let's mow that fat dude down. Um... <laughs> Oh yes, I know what I was saying. I was going to say, I think what we've learned is if, if you do make an arcade game and you want to sort of violently bring your, your customers into the world of the game, just be careful you don't sort of beat them up in the process. Because it can make a, a really good game. It can sort of, I wouldn't say tarnish the legacy, but ca it can take a little bit away from it. Because again, this game was known for being pretty violent on its players. And I, I feel like the Dreamcast port here, where they, they've just sort of toned that down and had it just sort of be interpreted as screen shifting, is actually a way better way of doing it. Because I'm old, I don't want to break a bone on a video game. This is like a really, 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 really good game. I think we have also learned that Lady Gaga ripped off the 80s, if you know what I mean. She, she stole Poker Face! 
from this game. And I don't care if people out there disagree with me or think I'm misinterpreting things. I know I'm right. It's all that matters. Um, Alright, so Power Drift. It is one of the games in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And so what do we think about that? Well, there, I, have two, I have two views on this whole question of whether this is a must play. First of all, in terms of its graphics, and especially this Dreamcast version, I, I can't place another game. I mean, I'm sure there must be another game that does this, but I can't really place another game that has this sort of rotational 3D element to it. And I I really like it, actually. I It, it kind of adds something to the game for me. So as far as just graphics and also, like, it is it, do, it does feel like you're driving around on a roller coaster. There's a lot of attitude in the drivers. Like, it's t you, you can feel the Sega coursing through the veins of this game because Sega had, like, a lot of attitude as a video game company. People are flexing their biceps. They're given that guy was given the devil horns. Oh man! So in terms of like graphics and, and attitude and the immersion stuff, for an '80s racer, this is awesome. And so on that level, I do want to recommend it. On the other, on the flip side, though, it is, you know, very touchy with the controls. You easily slide off the course. It can be hard to place, and so it probably will take a lot of practice if you actually want to do well in this game. Um, as I have shown, picking it up and just playing it very briefly, you may not get that uh, that feeling of success. So yeah, I would say I would say it's a mixed bag. It depends what you're looking for in a racing game, but I could definitely see this being a game that you, you know, if you fancy yourself an arcade racing fan, you've never played this game. I think you got to play it, and you might even have to track down that violently abusing arcade version just to try it, because it really was an experience from everything I've read. But you know, for for people who who want sort of games that may have a bit more complexity to them, or, or sort of a, a slightly easier learning curve in terms of controls and stuff, this may not be the game for you. So a bit of a toss up there. But I don't know. What do you guys think? That's my opinion. What do you guys think about Power Drift here? Did you tune into this video hoping to see me play one of your faves, or is this a game you've never heard of and you sort of? feel you've gotten your fill checking it out with me i don't know let me know in the comments down below as always and as always guys if you have been enjoying this video what you can do to help me out is slap a like on it you can subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future videos and of course you can always share this video with your friends family and grandparents because they're always looking for new youtube videos i hear and uh helping spread the word about my channel my little quest here is the biggest favor you could ever do for me so just keep that in mind, and until next time, my friends, if you find yourself trapped in the 80s, looking to get roughed up a little, but you're not a fan of boxing, seek out a copy of Power Drift. You shan't be disappointed. And until next time, my friends, take care of yourself. All right. Peace. Man, it's interesting, these tracks, these, these like, cups or whatever... You, the first track you start off on is nothing to do with the remainder of the tracks. We went from uh, being over water to literally just being in the middle of the woods. They're like, well, we didn't really plan this cup all that well. And yeah, I know we promised beaches and trees and roads. But we're, just, we're, we're phoning this one in. You guys are just going to be racing in the straight up wilderness. Good luck with that.